All right, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is going over the uh, robot design that we, we did in class and uh, just reiterating the steps of it so that you can go back, watch through it, pause if you need to. So I'll be moving relatively quickly through the basic steps of just creating a character in Illustrator using the most simple functions like shape tools and the pathfinder. So that's what we're headed to. I can go over to file and new to open a canvas and what I'm using is a thousand by thousand pixel work canvas. And this is basically just having open table space. That's more or less what we're doing. If I was doing something like a business card or a, a postcard, etc., I would size it to the appropriate dimensions of that. But if we're dealing with just workspace, a thousand by thousand pixels is ideal for me anyway. That's the kind of thing that, uh, designers will inevitably argue about, but that's all we need here. So what we're going to be using basically is just the arrow tool at the very top, uh, which is the selection tool, not to be confused with the one right beneath it. So in general, your default position should be that arrow key over at the top. And then on the left, just a few spaces beneath that, you'll see either the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool sticking out. And if you click and hold, it's going to show you the variety of tools that you have at your um, at your beck and call, we'll say. And we're going to start with the rectangle tool. And if I click and drag that out, uh, just on the middle of the canvas, it's going to automatically come out with a white fill and a black stroke. Any shape that you create in Illustrator is going to have a fill and a stroke. The fill is the color inside the boundaries of that shape, and the stroke is the color that runs along the boundaries thereof, which you could, if I wanted to over on the right, make thicker or something like that so you uh there's things you can manipulate there most of the time when we're working with shapes and pathfinder though you don't use the stroke the stroke uh certainly comes up but when it comes to building with basic shapes i don't actually use it a lot so what we'll do is we'll use these options over here on the right for the stroke and for the fill and i will remove the stroke by using the none option underneath after clicking it and then with the fill i will give myself either one of these default colors or go to the paint palette and choose something a bit more specific i want something rusty that's kind of rusty we'll go with that uh, i can always make adjustments to this uh shape now that i have it put in i can take the bottom and shorten it, lengthen it, etc. Get it to where I want it to be. That's about right. And then I'll go over and grab the ellipse tool by clicking and holding on the shape tool, get to the ellipse tool. And what I'm wanting here is a fully proportionate circle that is the same width as the rectangle. And Illustrator makes this extremely easy to do. And what this will give us is this perfect arch, this uh, half circle uh, dome across the top of the shape. So when you go to hover over the canvas, these little pink lines will pop up showing you what you're lined up against. And so I'll go to the left side and I'll click and hold shift while dragging out a circle. It will kind of stop me once I reach the edge. And I'm holding shift so that it doesn't get squished like this. If I let go of shift and I've still got the, the mouse clicked in, I've got this wibbly wobbly thing going on. If I hold shift, we're going back to a perfect circle. I can hit the edge, line it up perfectly, and put down that ideally sized circle, and then go back to my arrow and just kind of shift this thing up until the pink lines pop up and tell me this is lined up at the exact midpoint of the circle with the top edge of the rectangle. And then I've got this perfect seam. It looks like a traditional arched window. And this is what we're going to use for the basic body. Now, in merging these together, I can click and drag anywhere on the screen outside of it and capture both of these in the same selection pool. And by the way, I'm not really sure why these little <laughs> bits of labels are showing up here. That shouldn't happen on your screen. It's a weird glitch that's happening to me. But once I have these selected, over on the right, you'll see the Pathfinder option that'll come up. If it doesn't, you can go to the window menu at the top and hit Pathfinder, which is listed alphabetically, and you'll get this little window pop up. Really, all we use is the, the top two buttons here, left and right. And if you hover over them, one will say Unite, and the other will say Minus Front. We'll get to that one later. Right now, we just hit Unite, and we merge these into the exact same thing. A bunch of remnants getting stuck all over the place. Okay. 
So here's my basic shape now. What I want to do at this point is create arms for this guy, and I'm going to use a rounded rectangle for that. So I'll go back to the, the rectangle tool and just draw out a basic rectangle shape. And then I'm going to zoom in. Uh, on a Mac, this would be Command Plus to zoom in. And on a PC, it's Control. That's the only real difference between them. And then I'm going to take these little four dots that you see here. In the corner of the rectangle, there's little dot in each corner and I can take that and pull it in to round off the edges and get a rounded rectangle effect. Then I'll go back to my arrow at the top, hover just outside the boundaries of the corner and that'll give me the ability to rotate the thing so I can get a little bit of a rotation going. And then after I've done that we go into the cutting phase and this one is a, a little bit more complex so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. What I have to do is to create a new shape that covers up the area of the old one that I want to trim off. And so I'm going to create a large free-floating rectangle, just cover up the part of the arm that I want to remove, select them both, just like I did before, but in this case I'm going to use minus front, which takes the uh, shape on top and uses it to shear through the shape on the bottom. So I hit that button, I've got a free-floating arm right here that I can hover just outside, create a little gap between my figure and the arm to keep those sections separate from each other. Now, if I want two of those, I can just copy and paste using Control-C, Control-V. If you're on a Mac, it's Command-C, Command-V. Now I've got two of them. And there is a flip option that you actually get over here for flip horizontally, flip vertically. Uh, you can also do Object Transform Reflect up at the top uh, to create a reflection of the original. And then you've got same arm both ways, nice and uh, split out. Next up is going to be creating the leg, which is going to be kind of a similar process. I'll create a rectangle that's a little longer than it needs to be and I will round off its edges just like I did with the last one. In fact, if I was being really studious, I would have paid attention to the radius on the previous one, uh, but instead I'm just going to eyeball it. And once I've got that done, I'm going to take another rectangle and just kind of cut off the top here so that I can get a leg of the appropriate size. And I want it to be rounded at the bottom and flat at the top, so I'll use minus front to accomplish that. Now I've got flat at the top, rounded at the bottom. I can take this down, pop it underneath him, and now we just need to throw a foot on there. For the foot, I'm going to click and hold, and I'm going to go down to the Polygon tool, and I'm going to click and drag out a polygon. The Polygon tool is one of the more confusing because you have to keep it held right here with your uh, mouse. I'm not letting go of the mouse button, and while I have this mouse button pinned down, I'm going to use the arrow keys down to reduce the number of sides, up if you want to increase the number of sides. So I take it down to a, a triangle, but Illustrator's triangles are a little bit finicky. You should be aware that if you want to put down a triangle, it, you're pretty much going to have to hold shift as you do it, just like we did with the circle, uh, to make sure that it lays flat and it, you, it can be easily manipulated afterwards. In general, that's a piece of counsel for this one particularly. So I hold shift and it flattens it out. And then while holding shift I can finally let go of the mouse once I get it to the appropriate size that I want. And then I can take it and flatten it, squash it a little bit, and put it on here, line it up to get a nice little foot shape. I'll select both of those, use the pathfinder to unite them together. Now it's a single shape. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the arm. Copy, paste, and then I'm going to flip it. Huzzah. Next thing we're going to do is throw some eyeballs on this guy. And this is going to be relatively easy to do. I'm just going to go to the ellipse tool over on the side. I'm going to create an eyeball. Just one. I'll make it a different color just to, to simplify it some. There we go. So nice little blue eyeball. And then I'm going to take it, copy and paste. I've got two of them. Move them up here side by side at the distance that I want them to be. And then I'll click and drag over both to select them. And I think I'll actually make them a little bigger. There we go. Then I'll take both of them, hover over. When you have both selected, it will help you find dead center. You'll see that little pink line pop up. It helps you find dead center. 
there we go. And then I'm going to select the body and the eyes. Now this is a little complex because if I click and drag over the whole thing, I'm going to end up grabbing the arms as well. I don't want to do that. So instead I'm going to click the body, hold shift, click the eye, hold shift, click the eye and that selects all of them doing the same thing as dragging the box but it gives me more precision and then I use the classic minus front to shear through and now this guy's got an actual wonderful holes cut in his body for eyeballs so put that body where it's supposed to go get those arms lined up better okay very last thing we're gonna do for this is create a little antenna for him a couple of antennae and for these I'm going to want to do the same thing I did with the rounded rectangle before except I'm going to pull the radius in so far that it creates a capsule shape and then I can just rotate that to get it to the orientation that I want I can put it over the head copy paste flip that thing line it up with the other at about the distance that I want, select them both, and I can line them up over the head just like I did with the eyes. And now I've got this perfectly symmetrical robot, which I can take the whole thing, scale them a little bit. I can go up to the object menu and hit group, which will stick all the pieces together. So anytime I select them, I can uh, grab the whole thing without having to worry about grab each of the objects. I can uh, take him and copy and paste that group multiple times so that I have lots of robots. Then I can select all of those and I can do this. And this is how you get the events of Terminator. You just duplicate the robots to the extent until there's so many that humankind can no longer survive. And so that's the, the basic gist of it. Really simple, how to use the tools, how to use the Pathfinder to make something. And of course, this is broadly applicable. You can use this in all kinds of different ways. There's a lot more to Illustrator than this, but these are the bare bones basics.